Welcome to one of the most advanced sniper guides in the history of Battlefield. All the footage that you see here today is from Battlefield Hardline. But make no mistake, everything that you will learn is applicable to Battlefield 4, Battlefield Hardline and most likely to Battlefield 5. All the Sniper University videos that you have seen on Fog of Gaming have been preparing you for this. You didn't know about it, because I didn't tell you that when I was making these videos. But they have been part of a bigger plan. About 10 months ago I had the idea to show you how to kill drivers and pilots with a sniper rifle. I couldn't just make a video about this without showing you the basics and giving you the necessary time to practice. If you have been watching the previous videos and if you have applied everything that was shown, then you are now ready. You are now ready to kill drivers and pilots. You will be able to do this consistently, not only once or twice with a lucky shot. You will be able to do this multiple times per round. I will show you how you can do this in Battlefield Hardline, but know that everything is applicable to Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 5. I will show you everything in a few different chapters. Chapter 1 will be the basic kills, then you will see the advanced kills and for the expert players among you I will show you some pretty extreme kills. Chapter 1 are the basic kills that don't require a lot of special skills or special timing or anything like that. The only thing that these kills require is patience. Patience for the right timing, so that you can make an easy kill. Chapter 2 will require more from your side. They require more skill, knowledge and timing and they might require multiple shots depending on the range or gun. The final chapter will cover extreme kills and they will require a lot of skill from your side. You will need a lot of knowledge and you will need the perfect timing. Let's start with chapter 1, basic kills. These skills are the ones that everyone can make, so I will keep it short and simple. For the expert players, you can use skills like this to get used to a new gun, to see how the bullet behaves and to get used to the muzzle velocity and the bullet drop. But soon you will move on to something more advanced. Use these basic skills to develop your sniping skills. I will explain everything step by step. Step 1 is the practice shot. By far the most efficient way to know where and how to aim. If you have an idea of the distance to your target, then fire one practice round and track the bullet. This bullet will tell you where it will hit and you have just figured out with which part of the scope you have to aim with. This is your starting position. I still use this practice shot method to make my extreme kills which I will show you later in the video. For step 2 you will have to find a stationary target. This is very easy to do in battlefield. Just find a guy who is about to enter a vehicle and he will be stationary long enough for you to kill him. Use your minimap to find a guy like this. There is absolutely no need to lie down and aim through your scope for about 5 minutes. The reason why you have to find a stationary target is very simple. You have to get used to sniping people in cars. The objective is to snipe a guy out of a moving vehicle. But before you can do this you need the necessary amount of practice. You have to get used to shooting drivers and passengers and the best way to start is with a stationary target. Sometimes you will have to wait to find a stationary target and sometimes one will literally fall out of the sky. These guys really park their heli in the wrong spot. This is the next step. Kill the driver and passenger when they are stationary or almost stationary. This is a variation of the previous step but this time you will have to wait until they are stationary. You would be surprised on how many times a vehicle comes to a grinding halt in Battlefield. Some guys miss their turn, they drive over a bump and they lose control and some guys even stop to pick up their bodies. Use these random opportunities to make your kills, but wait until they are stationary, make it easy for yourself. Your basic sniping skills are going to improve a lot if you do everything that I will show you in this video. But as you can imagine, the better your skills were before the video, the easier it will be to kill the driver. So keep working on developing your skills. Shoot at everything that moves because every bullet counts. But keep it simple, and when the opportunity arises, kill the driver when he is not moving. It's all about timing. In this chapter it is important to wait long enough until your enemy is stationary. This will make your life a lot easier and his life a lot shorter. Step 4 needs some explaining before I actually show you what you have to do. The great thing about Battlefield is that you will get access to a lot of sniper rifles. Some are good and some are not so good. 
I'm not going to tell you which ones to use, but I will advise you to try out all of them. Each gun will teach you something. One gun might teach you to be patient, another will force you to go for headshots and some guns will require you to shoot a lot of bullets. In Battlefield you will be able to shoot with bolt action sniper rifles and you will be able to shoot with semi-auto sniper rifles. In step 4 you will have to shoot a lot of bullets, so we are going to choose a semi-auto sniper rifle. If you want to kill somebody who is in a moving vehicle, whether it is a car or a helicopter, you need to learn where you have to shoot to kill a specific passenger. This is not as obvious as it sounds. You know that most vehicles have occupants and you think that you know where they are seated. For a car it's pretty obvious, but everything changes when you start shooting at a helicopter. It will pitch up, pitch down and it will bank left or right. All of these movements will obviously change the location of the passengers inside. It is up to you to figure out where they are. You won't have time to think about this when you are on the battlefield. The best way to figure this out is to shoot a lot of bullets. Shoot at the helicopter from every possible angle and try to find out what works and what doesn't. Do the same thing for cars and later on you will be able to make a difficult kill with only one shot. As you can see I am increasing the difficulty step by step. It will make this video easy to follow and you will see a steady progression in your own sniping skills. There is a learning curve and throughout this video you will see part of my learning curve. You need to experiment on how the bullets hit the moving target and the only way to learn this is to shoot. The more bullets that you shoot, the more experience that you get and the less bullets that you will need to kill. The objective is one shot, one kill. In step 5 we will go over from stationary targets and shooting a lot of bullets to killing drivers in slow moving vehicles. We are going to increase the speed. Not your speed, but the speed of your enemy. Up to now we have been shooting at stationary targets. Most of the time your enemy wasn't moving. From now on we are going to face the problem of speed. The speed of your bullet and the speed of your target. When your enemy is driving slowly, you will have to drag your scope slightly so that you can keep up with him. You don't have to lead your target yet, that is for the next step. The only thing that you will have to worry about is the direction of travel of your target. In a car or a van it is pretty straightforward. The direction of travel will be very linear. Try to position yourself so that your target will be coming directly at you. This will keep things simple. You will have to take into account his direction of travel, but if he is coming straight at you, then it will be very easy to kill him. You can develop your skills further by changing your position so that your enemy will come at you at a more challenging angle. But make sure that they are still driving at slow speed so that you can easily take them out. Once you get used to this, we can move over to step 6. How to lead your target. When your enemy is coming at you from an angle, or when he is far away in the distance, or when you are using a gun with a slow muzzle velocity, you will have to lead your target. There is a lot of skill involved in leading your target. However, it is very easy to learn how to do this. I will give you a basic explanation now, but I will discuss this in depth in chapter 2 when I show you the advanced skills. All you have to know at this stage is that your enemy will travel at a certain speed and your bullet will travel at a certain speed. You will have to match those so that your bullet will end up hitting your enemy. If you choose a gun with a high muzzle velocity and you keep the distance and angle to your target small, then you won't have to lead your target very much. This is where we will start so that you can get used to leading your target. It will take some time to experiment with this. The best way to do this is to shoot at a moving car. In the beginning, just try to hit the car with every bullet. Once you get used to this, then start aiming at a certain window and make sure that every bullet goes through this window and soon you will be able to do the same with your enemy. This way you can teach yourself on how to hit a moving target and eventually you will be able to lead your target and take it out with only one shot. Step 7 is a continuation of what you have been doing in step 6. You were just shooting at the vehicle to hit it, but now we are going to shoot at the vehicle to destroy it. This sounds easy, but you have to fire a lot of bullets and you will have to hit that car with almost every bullet that you fire. You can't do this from every location on the battlefield. You will need a large line of sight. 
because as you can imagine it will take quite a few shots to destroy a car. So you will have to give yourself that time. Try to find an elevated position close to a road. When you see a car in the distance and it is likely that he will come your way, then slowly start shooting at it. Make sure that every bullet that you fire is on target. Slowly start increasing your rate of fire like you can see here. The closer your target, the higher your rate of fire should be. You can clearly hear the increasing rate of fire as a car comes closer and soon you will destroy the vehicle and everyone who was stupid enough to stay inside. The objective of chapter 1 is very simple. If you followed everything step by step then you will now be able to kill a driver with only one shot. It is awesome to be able to do this and you will be able to make some pretty nice kills. But let's be honest, we kept things simple. We positioned ourselves in an ideal location so that we can make killing easy for us. That won't be the case in chapter 2. We are going to make things difficult. The first step is the most important step that I will explain to you in this entire video. I will show you how to lead your target from a difficult angle. In Battlefield, sniping is slightly more realistic than in most other games. The developers implemented something called bullet drop. This is what most people struggle to deal with. There is one golden rule and that is the following. Don't shoot at where your target is, but shoot at where it will be. This sounds easy, but it isn't, unless you know what you have to deal with. In Battlefield, you will have to compensate for your muzzle velocity, your bullet drop, the speed of your target, the direction of travel of your target, and the angle to your target. And you will have to do all of these things simultaneously, just to kill one guy. Don't give up just yet. It is easier than it sounds. Basically, all of this boils down to math, but math is boring and we're not going to go there. Let's break down the 5 requirements. Number 1. Muzzle velocity is the speed a projectile has at the moment it leaves the muzzle of the gun. This will vary depending on the gun that you are using. The higher the muzzle velocity, the less effort you will have to put in to lead your target and vice versa. Number 2. Bullet drop is something that has been implemented in Battlefield to simulate gravity. In other words, to kill at long range, you will have to aim above your target so that your bullet will hit your target. Your bullet will arc towards your enemy. The higher this value, the more you will have to compensate. The speed of your target is very simple. It is what it is. A fast moving bike will travel faster than a slow moving truck. You will have to lead your target a lot more if he is traveling faster. Number 4. Um, I hope I don't have to explain the direction of travel. I'm sure that you know what that is. You will have to lead your target a lot more when he is driving from your left to your right than when he was driving straight towards you. Number 5. The angle to your target is basically the elevation. In other words, shooting uphill or downhill. Most of the time when you are sniping you will have the high ground and you will be shooting downhill. There are not many snipers out there who can make their first bullet count when they shoot uphill because most of us aren't used to this. 99% of the time we are shooting downhill. These are the 5 things that you will have to compensate for in order to kill your target with only one shot. The only way to learn how to compensate for this is practice. Shoot at moving vehicles like I showed you in chapter 1. Try to hit a vehicle with every bullet that you fire so that you can teach yourself how to compensate for the 5 points that I mentioned before. Once you can do this, increase the difficulty. Try to hit a specific window. And finally, you will be able to kill the driver. The gameplay that you have just seen in the last 2 minutes was me increasing the difficulty even further. I started with an easy sniper rifle with a high muzzle velocity and a low bullet drop and I positioned myself almost head on with my target to keep things simple. I quickly went over to one of the most challenging sniper rifles with a slow muzzle velocity and a high bullet drop while I kept targets coming straight at me. Basically you will have to go from leading your target with an easy sniper rifle to leading your target with a difficult sniper rifle to leading sideways with a difficult sniper rifle. And soon you will be able to kill a fast moving target through a side window with every sniper rifle out there. The ultimate goal is to kill the driver in one shot, one kill. 
but certain sniper rifles don't allow you to do that. They require multiple shots to kill. This is step 2. You have just learned how to lead your target in step 1, but now you will have to do this multiple times in only 1 or 2 seconds. One shot is not good enough anymore. You are now required to fire multiple shots in only a few seconds while you are constantly compensating for the 5 items that I mentioned before. And some of these items are changing every time you fire one single bullet. Is this difficult? Of course it isn't. You already know how to do this. The only thing that you have to do now is to get better and faster. That's it. The beauty of this is that all of this comes with experience. The only thing that you have to do is to spend more time playing your favorite game. That can't be difficult, right? The next step is a very important step if you want to kill the driver with a super clean kill. This is the ultimate objective for a sniper. One shot, one kill. From now on, you will have to work on your precision. In certain situations, you cannot afford to miss. Your target might kill you if you miss, your buddy might steal your kill if you miss, or your target might not be in sight anymore after you missed your shot. In this clip you can clearly see that your window of opportunity is very small and on top of that your buddy will make the kill shortly after you had your chance. These are the kind of kills that you will have to make, under pressure with limited time available to line up for that one perfect shot. There are no second chances anymore, only perfection will suffice. How do you do this? Well, the learning phase is over, you are now a master at sniping. First of all, select a sniper rifle that can kill with only one shot and for a kill like this you will have to be sure that your one shot will kill the driver. If the situation is in your favor, then take your time before you shoot. Try to predict where your target will be next and try to see the path your bullet will follow before you shoot. Make small adjustments to your aim and at that one perfect moment fire that one single round that has your enemy's name on it. Sometimes you won't have time to aim, so if needed you will have to be fast. There is no special training required, you know how to do this, you have done this before and you have been training for this one perfect moment. From now on you will be able to kill everything and everyone that comes close, no matter how difficult the angle or how small the window of opportunity. There are a few tips that I can give you that will help you to become an ultimate sniper. Try to find an area of the map that is in your favor. Learn this part of the map by heart and make sure that you know where your enemy will attack you from. Defend yourself first so that you can stay alive as long as possible. And when the opportunity arises, kill the driver. Use your equipment to cover your back and try to be unpredictable. In step 4 we will increase the difficulty further. I hope you didn't think you were finished, Master Sniper. So far we have kept things easy, cars driving towards us and all that easy stuff. That we can deal with. We are going over to killing drivers who are driving away from us. This is far more difficult than you might think. If your enemy is driving away from you, your target and your window of opportunity is constantly getting smaller, increasing the pressure on you to take your shot. It is easy to estimate the speed of a vehicle when he is getting closer and closer. If he is driving away from you, it will only get more difficult. Try to build up your knowledge and your experience. First shoot at easy targets and increase the difficulty. First shoot at vehicles that are close to you and slowly increase the distance. Sometimes it pays off to wait until your target is almost out of sight. In step 5, you can let your imagination and your skills go wild. Instead of doing one step at a time, why not combine multiple steps at once? Try to make some kills while you are combining step 1, 2 and 4. Lead your target. Use multiple shots and shoot the driver out of his car while he is driving away from you. Not difficult enough? Well, I can give you a lot more stuff to do, but I think that you came far enough for one video. By now you are truly a master sniper and you are able to kill the driver with only one shot. But we are not going to stop here. We are going to take this even further in the final chapter. Extreme kills. In this final chapter, I will talk you through some of my most extreme kills. Only one kill was based on luck, all the other kills were made intentionally. Which means that if you apply 
everything that you have learned so far that you will be able to make the same extreme kills. Kill number one, lead your target from an extreme range. This kill was made when I was trying to unlock the knockout. For info, each kill will have something unique. Range, precision, luck, speed, pressure or skill. Kill number two is a kill that I made with the SOCOM 16. First, I really had to jump out of the way for this kamikaze driver. Then, I managed to hit his car with a few shots, but it wasn't good enough. And then, just as he thought that he got away, one shot, one kill. A kill from behind, from far away. The next kill required some patience. I wanted to kill this driver, but he got stuck. To be honest with you, I don't think that he was a very good driver. So I had to wait until he managed to continue his journey. I think he was driving Miss Daisy. Anyway, I missed the next two shots but my laser drip mines managed to get the job done. And finally, the first guy started driving again. And I was lucky enough to get another kill from behind from far away. One shot, one kill. Shooting at cars that are driving away from you can be tricky at first. But with the necessary amount of practice, you can easily make every bullet count. Sniping isn't difficult, it isn't rocket science. All you need is the right settings, the right gun, the knowledge and the necessary amount of practice. The next kill is called extreme luck. Man, was this guy in the wrong place at the wrong time. Poor driver, he never saw this coming. I never saw this coming. In slow motion it looks even worse. I really owe this guy an apology. And what about these guys? They should have taken the bus. How many guys can come out of a coupé? A two-seater car while I already killed the driver. I didn't know who to shoot first. At some point I wanted to rush out to make a kill and this one just drops dead in front of me and I was caught with my pants down. Luckily the other one didn't know how to aim and I managed to get out of there in time. I was able to turn around and kill him. And again I had to run away from another one. Only to find Superman standing there. This was one weird moment in gaming for me. These guys just kept on coming. But luckily we were able to clear this area, because we had the area surrounded and no one was getting out of here. Anyway, and finally I had some time to set up some nice little traps for my beloved enemy and I was able to regain some health. And in the end I was able to make my last kill in this little clip. The poor guy who was just getting some fresh air. But I'm sure he went straight to hell because his car burst into flames at the moment of his death. But the stupid thing just wouldn't explode. The next kill is called super fast bike snipe kill. Well, because it is a super fast bike snipe kill. I was waiting for this guy, but I didn't think I needed to be that fast to kill him. And last, but definitely not least, the helicopter snipes. The first kill looks random, but it wasn't. I was aiming for the gunner and that was who I managed to kill. It suddenly became very quiet inside that helicopter and my buddies weren't getting shot anymore. The second kill was a heli snipe under pressure. I was already injured from a previous gunfight and I was being suppressed by the gunner. It is definitely not easy to make a kill under these circumstances. The next kill is a little bit different. Same spot on the map and I was busy setting up my cameras. At some point I noticed the helicopter above me and the pilot was trying to fly and shoot at the same time. That's why it's falling out of the sky. He gets back into his seat and then I waited long enough to make the kill. But look at how fast his second gunner takes over. Respect. I don't think many people would have been that fast to take over the controls. In slow motion it looks something like this. This is the exact moment that I pulled my trigger. Pretty nice, hey? But as you know already, the bullet won't hit him there because I didn't lead my target. In the next frame you can see that the bullet hit him somewhere between his arm and his chest. And last but definitely not least, a super long range helicopter snipe that I made by using the practice shot method that I showed you in the beginning of this video in chapter 1. The first shot was to determine how the bullet behaves and the second shot was meant to kill. I've shared a lot of tips regarding sniping and I showed you which path to follow to increase your skills. Rewatch the video as much as possible so that you know which step you should follow. Guys, may I ask you for a favor? 
If you enjoyed watching this video, would you mind sharing it with all your buddies? And if you have the time, give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more, then make sure that you hit that subscribe button and I will take care of the rest. Thank you very much guys. This was Fog of Gaming and please don't snipe me on the battlefield.